how has returning to California, Berkeley, to get your PhD strengthened your passion for education and sharpened your purpose? I think it's about informing, definitely to create sharper, um, more knowledgeable students, but it's also really to help teachers understand their students. There's nothing in their textbooks, their te you know, the student textbooks or their teacher's editions about cognitive science, about potential misconceptions that students have. It's not part of their teacher education program. So it's such, it's, it's very much lacking in the education field because it's been so, so disparate, you know, from education. Cognitive science has been sort of its own line of research. And so now that we're kind of bridging cognitive science into the world of assessment, um, I think it's making a, it's making a difference in how teachers really can teach. At Northwestern, when I joined the Mathematical Methods and Social Science program, it was pretty generic. So you could basic, you're basically learning how to apply mathematics to the social sciences arena, which is pretty unique in and of itself in, that, in the way most interdisciplinary work goes on um, in high schools, if it goes on at all. So when I went into interdisciplinary work at Berkeley, it was about doing the same kind of interdisciplinary work about the math or the statistics became statistics around educational programs and educational policy and specifically educational policy around assessment. And, um, and then the statistics got even more focused into statistics around assessment. So that's where the measurement came in. So it wasn't just you know, doing linear regression models uh, to look at how certain variables in education influence outcomes in education, but it was more specifically looking at how particular items on an assessment influence student proficiency um, and looking at the relationship between them. And so it just, it really, I mean, like any PhD program, I think you have to, you know, focus and get laser-like in your dissertation. And I, it was always a struggle. I remember going to my, my advisor and I you know, put out an idea for a dissertation. He'd be, that's like a life's work. Or <laughs> come in with something and be like, no, that's just a pretty short paper. You, know? you, you have to really find your niche and you have to find an area of research that's um, a, a, a fine enough grain size to measure, but also um, interesting enough that people would care about it. So I even kind of narrowed the focus even more so. Um, and I also focused within the area of uh, algebra um, for my dissertation. Now I'm kind of across the board. Um, but even within algebra, I had to look at um, particular strands within algebra. So I looked at um, how students make connections across multiple representations of mathematical functions in algebra. So it wasn't just kind of picking algebra. I mean, algebra is such a large um, body of, of curricula. That, yeah. Um, yeah. Even within that, and if I wanted to measure how students were making connections in algebra, you know, making a connection, let's say, between a graph, an equation, a table, and how you might describe it in words. Mm -hmm.